discuss ma a little about the uh, background to water, talk about uh, water and environment, intervention that we did, results, and the challenges we experienced. So, talking about water, I'm sure almost all of us in this room know the role that water plays, both at a domestic level and then at a production level. And so, this slide specifically talks about the role of water in communities and in production. So, uh, in uh, like a Ugandan setting, we, we, we have uh, a water access of 75% to communities, both communities and institutions. And then uh, in Western Uganda, which has uh, Southwestern Uganda, which has 26 districts where Chirhura falls, we are at 57% in terms of water access. And so Kenshonga is one of the sub-counties in Chirhura, and uh, it has 12 government schools and 10 private schools. So in partnership with Living Water International, which came in place in 2013, we were able to, to do uh, to analyze the situation, like in 2013. These were the figures that we had. We had a safe water coverage of 50% as a, a whole district, and then uh, a latrine coverage of 78%. So primary school access uh, to water was uh, only eight out of the 13. That's the rain, uh, rainwater harvesting tanks. And then uh, availability of that water in those tanks were only about actually 40 out of 340 schools in the whole district. And then the cost of water by then was about 300 to 500 shillings. So the distance to move to the nearest water source needed to move to about uh, 1,000 meters through that water source. So at the facilities next to the schools within Kenshonga, these were some of the figures that we got. You, in 2013, uh, we, had, uh, we analyzed specifically two cases, that is the diarrhea cases and the typhoid and you can see the figures down. So in analyzing in those few schools that we're operating in, we were actually doing a baseline on. So we decided to collect the data from the sick bays in schools and then data from the facilities that neighbor schools. So water access in Chirhura uh, bees in two ways. There is water for production, and then there is safe water, and then there is shared sources. So, on the source of water for production, because it is a community that uh, grazes animals, and so animals are considered more important, and so they have more open water sources in terms of dams than safe water, which may be like boreholes and, uh, and, 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 and piped water systems. So what intervention did we put in place? Uh, with living water, working together with local government, we came in place to put a few strategies to ensure that we change the trend. And so we formed, uh, we had to form school health clubs, we had to do sanitation competition, we constructed uh, construction of hand washing facilities, and then there was drilling of boreholes. So, information of, after drilling the boreholes, we also had to train, uh, like the school management committees on how best they can take care of these water sources and then train the pupils on uh, hygiene and sanitation approaches, and then later on other partners came in. So what was the result? As, as in, 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 in working with living water and local government, they were able to drill 14 boreholes in schools, and the whole sub-county had 48 boreholes for now, and then built institutional tanks, three of them in those schools. And then we also had uh, a primary schools that uh, received boreholes, there were actually five. Then there's, there was an element of sanitation bit that we had to stretch beyond to get uh, sanitary facilities in form of latrine because at the baseline, this is mainly, um, I'm talking about the quantities, but there's also a qualitative part of, the, of, of, of this other uh, implementation. So we also protected the nine, nine boreholes and so Last year, when we were trying to analyze the case and say, what, how much have we done in reversing the trend? There was a drop, if you, if you view it very well, from this other graph. We had 278, and this other side, we now have 56 for the case of diarrhea diseases. And so this was not going to be possible if we did not have a collaboration with Living Water International. Because at a local government setting alone, this is the figures that we're having. 
And so when the partner came in, which was leaving water, we were able to change that trend to those figures. So we also experienced a few challenges, which were beliefs and customs. And then the personal hygiene challenge that we had was uh, the change is a gradual process. We train the pupils in schools, but when, you, you know, when they get back at home, they still, uh, they have, the habits relapse. And so when the term starts, you again have to start from where we began. So in conclusion, reduction of wash-related diseases in both institutions and households remain a big challenge. That's called for partnership on water chain, uh, safe water chain to maximize health benefits. I acknowledge those persons for supporting us in, uh, in the process of implementation and sharing this data. Thank you. Thank you very much, George.